Okay, this is the last time I'm going to make this stupid video. I've tried three times and I can't get this, the sound to be working correctly. I'm kind of getting pissed off. But I think it's worth making this video because I've run into the problem lately uh, a few times in real estate, in solar uh, rooftops, in uh, portfolios of, of uh, O and M contracts where you have a similar structure for an SPV, a similar general structure. All the inputs are all different, but a similar general structure. And you want to create a whole lot of uh, little companies, special purpose vehicles, just little corporations. And you want to consolidate them up. You can put financing into these small corporations if you want to finance them on a separate basis or what have you. You just have to have a, a, a same kind of general overview so you start with a master list of a bunch of spvs now this could be 50 spvs although i would be afraid of the spvs uh, I, I would be afraid of the speed of excel and you can choose to to not include them you can put different start dates different lifetimes the projects, different capacities, different consumptions, different degradations, different amortization periods, different blah, 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 whole bunch of uh, 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 different assumptions, including assumptions about grabbing things from different kind of files. In this case, it's solar with a, uh, uh, with a, a uh, using a PV system. And then you can put some economic assumptions and some financing assumptions for the uh, 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 um, uh, the consolidation. So once you've done this, you create a little template model. I don't know why. Yeah, I guess a template model is a reasonable thing to say. I hate templates normally, but this you're going to create a single one from for an SPV, and that template model is going to take the name from this master database and then grab inputs depending on the, the the name which will in turn drive the row number the row number we'll use the match and index a lot here then we'll create a macro that just takes this little template file and redoes them and then we'll finally consolidate now the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to oh I'm, I'm i'm deleting all the sheets Okay, and uh, if you want to prove that these sheets have been deleted, I press Control A a couple of times. It didn't work. A stupid thing. Control A maybe up here a couple of times. Control minus Shift. Uh, uh, come on, Shift Control uh, uh, C. This is just kind of the standard coloring sheet. I'm going to create a table of contents. This is all from generic macros. Control Alt C. I think about one person in the world uses this. I don't know why people don't use it, but right now I have none of those SPVs defined. And the way that delete thing works is the very last sheet you see is SUP, supprimé en français. Okay, and that one that uh, we just say okay, let's uh, go around and around. And go around and uh, for for sheet oh, this is so bad form oh my god okay we'll go around the sheets but start at the back not at the front that's the key and then you go uh, 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 backwards and then you go step for forward step minus one and then if you find this name sup exit the sub don't delete everything anything in front of the sub sup but delete everything else okay not so difficult that's how all those those kind of things work okay and then we so let's go and look at this template now here is the key to the template file this right up here in row number one column number two it's got the name of the spv and as soon as you use the name of the spv you match that name with the uh, you just match the name with the whole list of names in column 
B of the master scenario. This is the whole key to everything. Just getting that name right. And then if it's SPV3, it'll take it from row number 8. Now, the macro will define these. these it will hard code kind of these things in it and also use uh, put that same uh, uh, put the same name in the, in the sheet name now once you've done that then you can use the index function so this first finds whoops what happened here oh shoot okay let's put three again so this we take a, I guess it still uses the PV syst one let's put Let's put uh, four here, okay? So it goes to sheet number nine, which means it takes PVSYS two. And here is the key behind all of these. Uh, well, this is not it. You you use the index function. I guess uh, uh, you use the index function, and the index function just says go to a column number and then take use this match to make sure you're taking it from the right row. And that's how you define all of these, these things. Okay, here's the uh, uh, power. Okay, they're all with just the index. With one kind of exception. In uh, if when I'm grabbing the amount of production, you use an indirect function. Okay, and the indirect function just says, this is a lookup, and it just says lookup on the month. And then take column B and, and column I. So if you look at one of these PV syst 1 or 2, here's column B for the month, here's column I. And please, now I can complain a bit, don't use the F4s. Don't, please be lazy with Excel. Don't, don't waste time with, you know, take the whole column. If you, if you don't take the whole column, it just makes things so much more prone to error, and that's the same for all of these index functions. I always took the whole column, okay? And there's another index function for the uh, 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 for some inputs, and then here's the investment cost. And I'm not going through this because uh, uh, my friend did it, and it's got some very creative kind of uh, uh, economic uh, uh, considerations in there. Okay, now if you uh, once you've uh, uh, created this template, then all you have to do is copy the template, and let's see how that works. What you do is you you this one you and then here I put it on a manual. Okay, and then I put use an index an input box. You need to dimension the beginning and ending things you, you it doesn't know these are going to be uh, uh numbers otherwise it thinks they're they're characters it's horrible and then you go around the rows and each time you go around the rows you create a little template file in this create file all the key thing that this does is it says okay uh go to the uh, uh master sheet and get from the row number, from the row number, get the name. This is the name of the uh, SPV, SPV1, SPV2, and so forth. And then copy this, the, the template, kind of to the end of the, the whole thing. That's what this does. And then do the key thing, which is to put this new name as the sheet name, and more importantly, Put the new name in cell one comma two. That's what I was just showing you. I hope you remember that. So that's all you have to do. The macro is not very complicated. And so when I did this for the second time, I go, oh shit, oh my god, I'm gonna have to remember this macro. It wasn't that bad. Okay, and now once we have that, I'm gonna do my little uh, 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 control minus and make a new table of contents just to kind of show off this stupid table of contents thing which is a really easy macro to make by the way the hard part is is getting the uh, functions in there that show when the file was created and where it's located and all that okay so oops <laughs> that was really stupid i meant to do this after 
I, I copied the template. Well, I'll do that again. Uh, maybe I won't. Okay, you'll believe me that it has a bunch of different files in there. So here's what it's doing. It's creating a file. Then it's copying it to the end. It's creating SPV2. Okay, SPV3. SPV4. SPV5. SPV6. And if you... So instead of wasting time with that silly little uh, uh, table of contents thing, I just we just put this into the. It just adds these different scenarios. Now, once you've added the scenarios, here's the the last step, or the second to last step, perhaps, is you take uh, and you use the indirect function to grab data. So this is, uh, let's go to the revenues. The revenues for the first one, it starts, and then we have a second start date, and a third start date. And I don't know what, what happened. We must have made a much lower power production or something like that. Okay, and each one of these numbers, here's how this works. These, this comes from the, the, the uh, it's just the row number for the revenues in the template file so i'm going to press control in the square bracket to find it and then and so it just is just the row of that one and then i can press f5 to go back okay and then the the um here this is what you need to know you need the indirect function and the indirect function takes the name of the spv looks up on the date and by the way, I have to talk about the date, just one thing. And then it says, okay, look up in on on the uh, in the template function on row three. That's the same date. And then uh, get the the number here. This B E E uh, E sixty six. This is the number. Get this number from the uh, uh, just using the lookup function. And again. Key is to take the entire row. Now, here's what I want to bitch about too. Don't think you're cool by making a monthly model. Oh man, monthly models just suck. They take up so much space and and they they just slow things down. So, but this case uh, that we wanted to create kind of a monthly model for a while. So here's here's what we did. We said okay. Well, let's put the start date in, and then this is the final date of the month-by-month -month analysis. You can make this smaller. And then after you do that, so for 72 periods, you're going to make it monthly, and then make it annual. Okay, and what happens there is that you, uh, here, I start with every, every model has the same timeline. This is absolutely crucial. And then uh, there's a little thing that says, if it's the the monthly period and the monthly period is whenever just this simple counter using eis this counter is less than the the the, the number i don't know why i didn't put it here too okay and then we uh so then these are all month by month but then you change to year by year and you use the xirr and for some of this stuff you better take it by year and some of this take it by month and then when you do all your inflation compounding and your adjustments for different currencies which are crucial you can uh, 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 you know and i put a, a ppp uh, ppp public private no purchasing power parity no perpetual pending project whatever okay i put that in and uh, uh, then we consolidate, get a income statement, a cash flow, and a balance sheet, compute some uh, uh, ratios, and do this then for a consolidation with sum if for the, the uh, profit and loss and the balance sheet, sum if s, because you have to find the uh, thing. So I'm just reviewing. You can create these kind of SPV consolidations, and it's not that difficult. You've got to create a master database and just use that and kind of create the template 
while you're creating, while you're kind of putting more assumptions in, and you kind of go back and forth here. And once you have this created, you just need the, you just need to select the, you, 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 you need to put the, the sheet name right on the top and you need to, uh, uh, have it be flexible to take any of the sheet names. And then you just create a little macro, a little loop that goes around and around. That's a key thing. And then for the consolidation, you use the indirect function. So using the match and index and creating a template, creating a little macro and using the indirect, you can do all of this. And it's really a lot easier than you, you, you may think. Okay. That's it.